personal. It's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers now. Another great night of boxing, Wednesday night boxing here on Pro Box. You know, uh, this is a post fight review for uh, the whole card, so I'm, I'm gonna run through the whole card and give you guys my little take on what took place on a, on a nice night of uh, Wednesday night boxing here on Pro Box. You know, shout out to Pro Box. You know, the fine folks there. You know, Gary Jonas, Paulie Malignaggi, uh Mike Goldberg, uh, Chris Algieri, good friend of the channel. You know, Chris Glover. You know, shout out to the whole to the whole Pro Box staff because. People always ask me like which cards I look forward to the most. It's never the big cards. It's always like the Wednesday night, Wednesday night, you know, pro box cards with prospects, you know, eager, eager to prove themselves and developing. I, I'm really big into the fighter development, so I really do enjoy these cards. But that's enough of that. Let's get into it, man. Let, let's start with the main event. You know, it was an interesting fight. You had 21 Mexican super middleweight Manuel Gallegos taking on 13 and 0 Richard Van Sicklin. Now Richard Van Sicklin, he burst onto the scene for me his last fight. Um, which was uh, last last year he, he had fought one of the Lopez brothers. He fought a Hakeem Lopez. You know, there's three brothers. There's Hakeem Lopez, Najee Lopez, and Casey Dixon. They're all brothers. And Hakeem Lopez was an undefeated fighter that, that Pro Box was trying to build up. And Richard Van Sicklin scored the upset victory, took his O. And Pro Box, which, 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 which what I like about them is they, they give fighters, if they come out, out here and they upset the apple card, they give them opportunities. And Richard Van Sicklin gets the, a great, uh, had a great opportunity tonight against Manuel Gallegos. You know, the same Manuel Gallegos, guys. You know, I've been live, I was live for his fight last year with um, Gabriel Lopez. Oh, no, in 2021, me and Pops were live for a fight with Gabriel Lopez. Um, he's beating Kevin Newman Jr. He's, he's beating Marco Reyes. So he's beating some decent little names, a solid fighter. And it was, I think, gonna be a, a step up in class for Richard Van Sicklin. And I think, honestly, in this fight, the result of the fight was a draw. Uh, the, the, the judges felt like it was a draw. I didn't see it that way. Uh, I personally thought Richard Van Sicklin won the fight. Richard Van Sicklin, I thought in this fight, showed so much. I mean, he showed so much improvement from the last fight against Hakeem Lopez. Uh, first and foremost, Richard Van Sicklin. Every time Guy, because Guy Eagles was a pressure fighter, Van Sicklin was, was, a, was a slick athletic southpaw, but he wasn't like one of these slick athletic southpaws who doesn't throw punches because because we have a lot of those guys in boxing. They watched Floyd Mayweather growing up. They watched these uh, certain boxers, and they don't like throwing punches because they feel like they're being smart, you know, whatever. But no, he 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 was he had the right amount of aggression, the right amount of finesse. Uh, there was the highlight. The highlight of the fight for me was in the I think it was the third or the fourth round. Uh, Gallegos and, and Van Sicklin were in the middle of an exchange, and Gallegos literally spits out his mouthpiece. So, uh, you know, the referee didn't stop the, stop the action. And Richard Van Sicklin wasn't going to wait for him to pick up his mouthpiece. In fact, the minute he saw that mouthpiece fly out, Richard Van Sicklin jumped on Gallegos and hit him with like two or three punches. And I like seeing that because a lot of these fighters, man, you know, there's these tactics to waste time and get out of tough situations. And and, and, and sometimes when he got when these guys spit out their mouthpieces, I just see fighters like taking it easy on them. And Richard Van Sicklin, he's not taking it easy on them. So that was really cool to see. Um, I like the way he fights, man. I like, I like his energy. I like the way he is in the ring, Van Sicklin, because... Um, he showed the ability to counter punch going forward, counter punch going backwards. He could initiate. Uh, he showed me different ways he could attack in this fight. So he showed me a lot of versatility within his his offense. And then um, I I really enjoy the camaraderie between Van Sicklin and his coach because in the in the tenth and final round, just before, before it started, they're like yelling at each other, like "Come on, we gotta get it done." Like it, it kind of reminded me of like the football, like the, the the inspirational fourth quarter speeches. Like there was, you could definitely tell him and his coach and his team they have great camaraderie and respect for each other. But it was a fight where I feel like throughout the ten rounds, you know, Manuel Gallegos, don't get it twisted. Like what well, Gallegos had his had his moments too. Uh, there was a couple instances in the fight I can recall where Gallegos would really close that gap on Ben Sicklin and push him to the ropes and land big, devastating left hooks to the body. Um, but they were just too uh, few and far between. Every time Gallegos seemed like he was going to have some success or, or, or impose his will on the fight, Van Sicklin had an answer with the, with, the, with the hard, sharp, straight left-hand counter, and it was there for him all night. He, he, there, there were parts of the fight where it seemed like Van Sicklin could have missed the straight left-hand counter. You know what I'm saying? So... Um, Definitely a lot of improvement. I, I thought he deserved a nod. The judges thought otherwise, so it is what it is. But I don't think that draw 
or that performance hurts Ben Sickland's stock moving forward. If anything, to me, it enhances his stock, and I want to see him again. I think he's a he's a hell of a fighter, and um, I'm, I'm, I can honestly say this fight right here, the last fight got my attention. This fight made me made me a fan of his just 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 because just of the way he handled everything. And, and as far as Gallegos, Gallegos is a fun fighter, fun, tall, strong uh, Mexican super middleweight. You know, there's a lot of there's not a lot of super middleweights as tall as this guy. This guy's pretty tall for the weight class, so I thought. Um, he did well, and I thought Ben Tiplin acquitted himself, and it, it was what it was. It was a it was a good fight, and that's what pro box is all about, you know, uh, good fighters and great fights. So uh, yeah, shout out to both fighters. I thought Ben Tiplin won, um, but they get out of the draw. So um, it is what it is there. But uh, moving on, uh, we had a personal favorite here on True School Sports in action tonight. We had uh, Najee Lopez, you know, uh, Najee Lopez, Atlanta's very own Najee Lopez. Uh, he was taking on the veteran fighter. Uh, 26 6 uh, no, 23 16 and 3 christian baby and rio so it was 5 and 0 versus 23 16 and 3 uh the result of the fight was actually a uh Nigel lopez uh ud so Nigel lopez interesting this, this is an int intriguing fight guys because Nigel lopez is a big fighter he like he's, he's, he's big size wise uh rios took him the distance Nigel had never been the distance in his entire career Nigel was also fighting at um the lowest weight of his career you know he's he's gradually trying to get down to 168 which i find kind of crazy right because the whole time i've been knowing naji you know uh, this is a guy that fought jared anderson in the amateurs this is a guy that when he turned pro he turned pro as a as a basically a cruiserweight and i always thought the intention for pro box was going to be you know to get naji down to light heavyweight you know i thought light heavyweight, heavyweight was a good a good weight class for him um they insisted uh, they're, they're insisting otherwise and 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 now they're trying to get down to 168 so he fought this fight he actually weighed in at 173 and a quarter um but they're, they they made their intentions known that they're gonna try to get him down to 168 now mind you naji turned pro his weight was two, 209 pounds two, basically basically 210 pounds and then he's fought pretty much in the either um high 180s or anywhere in the 190s he fought tonight at 173, so he he had to go through a long transitional period to get this weight down in a healthy manner. Um, and I'm gonna say this: I've always rated Najee Lopez. You know, I, I don't I don't go around I don't go around um, crowning any sort of prospects to be future world champions. I, I'm very particular about who I who I give that th those kind of titles to, because I feel like everybody's doing that these days. They're just calling this guy the next world champion, that guy the next world champion. But I but I've been adamant about it for like four years now since i know who naji lopez is i think he's gonna be a world champion and tonight he fought a a, a, a veteran wildly veteran in uh christian fabian rios a guy that's you know for lack of a better term he's been around the block i mean christian fabian rios has been in there with with name opposition um christian fabian rios has been in there with the likes of Kyron davis esquivio Facal, um you know, a lot of fighters, a lot, a lot of fighters that you guys would be familiar with. Tommy Langford from my from our from our UK people. Tommy Langford, remember him, the the, the light punching domestic fighter. He fought him, uh, David Lemieux, um, and, and, and he took David Lemieux the distance as well. So he's shown a great beard on him, a great chin, um, more often than not. And um, Najee had to be going there and be very patient tonight. And I I, I loved what I saw from Najee. You know, it was only a six rounder, so I feel like in an eight or, or ten rounder he might have got him got him out of there, but. He, he looked really good with the way he was moving around the ring. He, he showed you tonight because Najee Lopez is known for the speed. He's known for the power. He's known for the athleticism. But tonight he showed you that he could be Najee Lopez the thinker, Najee Lopez the the boxer, Najee Lopez the, the patient thinking fighter. That's what he was in this fight. Um, but he was still doing that. But also he was still like dropping the right hand in there and coming around with the left hook. And he was, he was still aggressive and you still saw that he was dangerous. So think about it. Najee Lopez was getting knockouts at cruiserweight, you know, he's got, he got knockouts fighting at light heavyweight. Now, if he's fighting at 168 and he's making that weight healthily, he's going to be a monster of a problem for every for any and everybody at at, at, one, at a super middleweight. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he, how he looks. Uh, he's got to get down about five more pounds. But I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see what the Najee Lopez super middleweight experience looks like. Because I'm going to tell you this, you know, I don't think he's had to wait long to be, you know, in the top 15, top 10. I, got, I feel like Najee will be a guy that you look at, you know, we're talking about his somewhere between his 13th and 15th fight. And he'll be knocking around right at the door of a world title. So, uh, obviously, it's still work in progress. But um, I, I think the world of the kid, 
um, Pro Box has a lot of fighters. To me, that's like the best fighter. Not Marcus Valle, not, you know, these other guys. Najee Lopez. That's that's the best guy they got. And I'm going to leave it at that. Good good, good win for him tonight against um, Christian Fabian Rios. And then uh, I know I'm rambling, guys, so I appreciate you. I appreciate you if, if you're still here with me. But I'm going to run through the rest of the uh, car real quick. So speaking of Marcus Valle, he had his... Um, he had his eighth pro fight. He was seven and zero in this fight. Coming coming into uh, coming into a fight with uh, Gerard Tennant, and Gerard Tennant was eight and one. Gerard Tennant, interesting fighter because this is a guy in Gerard Tennant that basically hadn't boxed for like a while. He had a long um, layoff. I mean, he boxed so before Marcus Valle, right? He boxed in August of twenty thirteen, and then uh, he boxed what? March, so he's, he's had some layoffs. He's had a lot of layoffs in his career. I mean, if you look at him, right? So he he turned pro in 2013 and he had three fights. After his third pro fight against Mario Angeles, okay, he didn't box. That was in April of 2014. From April of 2014 to February of 2019, he didn't box. So he had like a five year layoff and he's been, you know, just winning his little fights. And he fought Marcus Valle tonight. And, and I, you know, I thought Valle won pretty comfortably. Um, he probably lost no more than a round, maybe two if you want to be real generous. But uh, I'll say this. Marcus Valle was getting hit a lot with the straight right hand over and over and over again. And, and this guy really had an answer for him in that department. And I feel like Marcus Valle is going to have to work, still work on those feints. I don't, know what it, I don't know what it is with these Puerto Ricans and, and, and not fainting. But, you know, he just, you know, he, he was getting caught a little, a little bit too, too much for my liking. But I like what he was doing. I, I could see him thinking in there. He was changing levels. He was jabbing real nicely, going around to the body. Um, and, and you still see that Marcus Valle is a very dangerous offensive fighter when he puts those punches together. So uh, he got the win. Good for him. There's still a lot of room to grow. And, and, and we're not going to be too harsh here because, like I said, he's only 8 0. He's still young in the game, learning his trade in the professional ranks. And it, it was a good win against a fighter that had some craft and had some ability in uh, Gerard Tennant. So good fight there. And then um, uh, last two fights, and, I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and then I'll end the video. Um, Cause I know it's a long video, but this is Pro Box, man. You know, you guys know I'm excited. You guys see how I'm excited I am. I'm excited for these cards. You know, um, also on the card you had Daryl Valzant, the uh, Haitian Olympian. Uh, Blast Van Zant. He was taking on uh, Lucas De Abreu. Lucas De Abreu was from, I believe, Brazil or Argentina. I don't know if he was Brazil or Argentinian, but uh, Brazilian. So Abreu was Brazilian. Abreu had fought um, Diego Pacheco back in 2021 and got knocked out on the eighth round. Uh, that was the only knockout loss of his career. Uh, Daryl Valzant did what Daryl Valzant normally does. Um, he was long. He was rangy. He was a bit awkward at times. Um, boxed him real nicely. Uh, you know, he, he, he's, a, he's gradually improving Daryl Valzant. You know, I'm not like, I like him. He's good. Not necessarily as high on him as I am. Like, let's say a Najee Lopez would love. But, but you know, there, there's definitely some talent there. And, um. He's an intriguing prospect to watch. Now I don't know if he's going to be a 68 pounder or a 60 or a 60 pounder because he fought today at 163 and a half. So maybe Pro Box trying to get him down to 160. We'll see. Personally, I think for his style and for his frame, if he can get down to 160, that'd, that'd be great for him. But you know, that's that's ultimately up to him and his body and his team and all that good stuff. So yeah, he won the fight, but Abreu was a bit upset. Him and his team were a bit upset after the fight because basically what wound up happening was the like I guess they there was a misunderstanding with the contract they thought it was an eight rounder it was actually a six rounder so Abreu and his team started yelling at the commissions and the refs and pro box I don't know what that was all about but I do know that, th that those things do happen in boxing but either way you cut it up slice it and dice it Daryl Valzain uh, wins and he runs his record up to seven to no and then in the last and final fight uh, you had uh, Jimmy Kelly yes that Jimmy Kelly the same Jimmy Kelly that fought high in Munguia. He fought a fighter by the name of Eduardo Ula Diaz, and he wound up getting a uh, decision victory over him. So uh, first fight since the Munguia fight, Jimmy Kelly is back in the win column. Good to see from him because, you know, I really did enjoy the Munguia fight, and I'm a Jimmy Kelly fan. So I, I hope um, I hope Jimmy Kelly can go out there and, 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 and pick up some more wins and get back in the mix at 160 because he's not in the rankings right now in any of the organizations, and, and, and this weight class really isn't that good. So I feel like... It, Jimmy Kelly wants to get anything out of his career. You know, he's in a he's in a space and time where it's like the division isn't as strong as it's been in past years, and um, you know, he can really go out there and make a statement. So good, good, good for him to get back in the win column. But uh, yeah, that's my recap of the Pro Box card. Um, you know, let me know what you guys think. I know it was a bit long, but you know, these cards I watched all the cards. I, I get excited for them. So 
Uh, I know this video probably won't do a lot of views, but who cares? We're not here for that. We're here. We're here for the sport of boxing. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, Naji Lopez, Daryl Val Zane, uh, Richard Van Sicklin, Manuel Gallegos, Jimmy Kelly. Any, anything regarding them fighters, you know, leave them down below. Make sure you guys take time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.